for your starting lineup tonight. You have two dudes and a cubicle. That's right. You may have heard of uh, Two Chicks in an Office by uh, Barstool Presents Them, but uh, we're doing something so original, Two Dudes in a Cubicle, because you see, the difference between us is we're two dudes, and we're in a cubicle. That's it's a pretty cra- big difference. crazy. I know, I know. I, I mean, I, I, I know that's we definitely have to give a play-by-play on how we that didn't works. We didn't get that but... idea from them. This is a completely original oh, yeah. idea. So original. So, obviously, we lost the game. That's, that's oh, very... No, 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 no. Uh, we didn't lose... We didn't lose we gave up the game, and we were embarrassed, okay? They came in, and they didn't shake our hands in the coin flip, and then instead of take, instead of that firing us up, we gave it right back to them. What do you feel about Reed Herring's first performance? I thought he was pretty, I thought he was pretty good. He impressed me for his first ever start. I thought he was comfortable. He found Trayvon Brown in the beginning because he's their best receiver, number one receiver, so he obviously wanted to feel comfortable throwing to a guy. And the receiving core did a great job showing up for him. Each of them had at least 50 yards each for the game, but towards the end when the pressure started coming and he started getting hit, I mean, I'm not going to, his offensive line did a terrible job, especially down the stretch, but that made him a bit uncomfortable and he made some, he made some really, questionable, really decisions. questionable decisions. He's thrown across he was forcing his body a, lot of a plays. few times mm-hmm. and that cost him. Mm-hmm. He threw the ball 65 times He's not on Saturday and it, it's difficult to come away Air free he, he, he got tired. 65 times. He got tired toward the he end. He went 37 for 65, 309 yards, two touchdowns, which is good, and two yeah. back-breaking interceptions. Exactly. Which really, I say, the end, were, well, the, were the, well, the interception at the end was just the the play, but the play in the in the first in the first half was just first, brutal. That was a crusher. You, you were within the 10 yard line to get in the end zone to go up 10 nothing, and then all of a sudden you're down. Throw the. Franklin McCain, and then he drives it 100-plus yards to the other end zone, and now you're down four. You have to score in those situations. You have to capitalize. Nothing on you him. Can't, yeah. You can't host another FCS opponent and then lose again after what happened last year on losing. I know they were the FCS champions last year, James Madison, but the Aggies, I know they won 12 straight, and they started off the year against Jacksonville State, their first win of the year. But you can't come. they can't come in. You can't pay them to come play with you and then watch them beat them. You can't pay them and give them the win at the same time. That's not how give it works. Give them money to whoop us. That exactly. Is, that is hilarious. We, did, we, don't, we, we don't need to give them any money. We not, just... only, not only did they disrespect us before the game by not shaking our hands, we paid them to do it exactly. and then beat us. Believe it or not, I can get even lower this weekend. Oh, it can. UNC. And that's why in this battle between two head coaches, Larry Fedora and Scotty seat. Montgomery, both on the hot seat, both coming off three and nine seasons mm-hmm. and season opening losses. Well, I think the wor- the worst part about it is UNC is not well, UNC is not really even a football no, school. It's not. It's, it's this like, is what this, ECU's. This, this, bre- we are. This football. is our bread and butter. It's, it's football. Yes. Is ECU. It's turning like, into baseball apparently. Yeah, it is. If it keeps going in this direction, it's gonna it's, it's gonna baseball be a baseball and school. women's sports. Yeah, in my opinion. I mean, we just had back breaking plays the whole game. He doesn't fumble that ball. That, that's a, every that's time, a seven point every difference. time we gain momentum in game. every way, we just gave it back. They shot themselves in the foot. Exactly, multiple times, and that's something that we've seen over the last three seasons under Scotty Montgomery. If they don't win this Saturday, who who are they going to beat the rest of the year? That's that's the question. The, this they they need to come out and save their season here. It starts now. You can't wait till we, week three. They play Virginia Tech. Uh-huh. Week four they play US, UCF. U, USF. Oh, USF, USF. sorry. Either, yes. either one. Does it matter which but one that is? But they're both away no. games, so like, you yes. automatically assume they're not going to come away with that. No. All the players love Coach Mo, and that's that's, that's, that's undi- I can't you can't deny that. Mm-hmm. It, you can see it. The players love playing for Coach Mo. He is a good recruiter. He's he's getting players mm-hmm. to commit to East Carolina. But at the end of the day, you go 3-9, and nine, two consecutive seasons, and start with yet another FCS loss. It's difficult to keep your job like yeah, that. It is. See, Virginia I don't Tech even is... know if firing him mid-season's in, que- in discussion or not, but if he wants to save his job even beyond now, yeah, he needs to win he this has game to do, he just needs to a start. Mirror, yeah, just to this, start. This, him winning this game, first off, doesn't save his job beyond this year by any means. Mm-hmm. It's this just... is a, this, it is what it is. UNC's mm-hmm. a bad team, and if, you've got to beat bad you've teams beat to a, keep mm-hmm. your job. Exactly. You at least had moments when you can say this was okay, and this was like okay, we can build on something. You see, and Scotty, then it, Scotty came in uh-huh. with with a big win to start his East, well, not to start his ECU career, second second game of his coaching career mm-hmm. against NC State, and we right. came out 
and we worked. We looked good. Yeah, we, we looked him. really good. Yeah. yeah, Pirate Nation was fully supportive of Scotty it's Montgomery. Like, wow, we this is two game and how quickly that changed. You know, people still had hope heading into next their last season, I believe, mm-hmm. and that seems to have <laughs> dwindled to very few yeah. amount of people, if if any, at this point. You know, it's, he's got. I'm sure he has his supporters, and he's a great guy. He's no, he he's well spoken. He, like I said, the players love him. I mean, it's that's just, what it is. It's just at he's, the end he's, of the day, you gotta produce. He's definitely a players' coach. He's a players' coach. I mean, we have all these nice facilities that are being built to bring players in. Like, look at our nice locker room. Adding look at on this. To the, adding stadium, on to the, the stadium, which we can talk about that another time. We can't, but, but like, oof. listen, you can't. They can't look at their. This is this was our record last year. That's not a selling point to bring recruiters in. So they're coming into a losing program, at least recently, and. They don't know. They don't pick up the. They don't feel the vibe of when it's not like the vibe is like it's like off of it. I'm sure if you walked into Alabama without playing a game, you would be like, I know what it feels like to win. You know, like when a, you know what like a mosquito gets on you. All right, imagine Col- <laughs> Kobe Gore's mosquito, and I just go like, that was basically Leslie to Gore, on just two plays. Two plays. Just yeah, two, two plays. catches. I do think ECU is gonna win this game. Wow. I really do because UNC is a very bad football team. Even though they will play for a coach, football is not their, is not is not their is not their school of pride. It's basketball. It's the tar. It's a basketball, it's a college all the way. So their thing is just like okay, it was fun to go to a football game every now and then. ECU, this this is pl- not just playing for the Scotty. It's not just playing for you know playing for a win. It's playing for the culture. I'm gonna go with forty five to twenty eight. Wow. 40, we're gonna 45. put up 45 I do. points. I do think we. Win? I think we can score 45 against their defense. Okay. Wow. That's a that's a bold prediction. Personally, I have UNC winning this game, and mm-hmm. it's as much as you say the culture. I've I know think I've saying seen have... enough of Scotty Montgomery's culture to know what exactly we. <laughs> I I had hope going into last week. And by and the way, before this podcast started, I'm the one who picked A and T to win, and he picked ECU. Yeah, I so. picked exactly. Now I'm we're making going the other mistake way. again. Maybe you're just the one who's always correct, and well, I'm we'll, wrong. We'll, but, we'll find out. I hope you, I hope you're right. I mm-hmm. I am not here wanting ECU to lose by any means. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, I'm giving my predictions. I got UNC winning 31-27, and that's. I I just have. I think we can beat them statistically. Can we make? the play when we need to you know we will see after saturday won't we i guess so go. all right everybody thank you for tuning into this first edition of tech experts two dudes in a cubicle hope that ring that rings to you that becomes a household name someday <laughs> but either way we're signing off thank you for joining in and we'll have our reactions next week and how the game goes thank you thank you thank you very much